Welcome to Soulful Conversations with Frank and Sheila. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Soulful Conversations with Frank and Sheila Battle. The beautiful lady sitting <laughs> next to me, as I always say. Please stop so it. That often. is so crazy. That is so crazy. Hey, family, we hope everybody is <laughs> doing well. We got to get him off of that. We hope everybody is doing well. What's what's happening at the battle station, Mr. Frank? Let's check in. Oh, wow. Well, let's just say uh, <laughs> we've had some good stuff going on. It's been a fun weekend. Fun weekend. Heading into the week. Lots of things to laugh about. Right. A lot of things to laugh about. We um, <laughs> we had, um, why don't you tell them? You had an opportunity to be the guest on something uh, else. Oh, well, you know what? I had skipped to Sunday. But you know what? Saturday was, was as the kids say, it was pretty dope. So Saturday... Um, Amanda Edie Oliver and her beautiful daughter Aaliyah both of them are beautiful Um, Amanda is like a little sister but she is an amazing entrepreneur she is an author a speaker a lecturer she is an um, academic she teaches in our community and she launched her first episode of her internet radio show on legacy internet radio and she asked us to be her first guest like how cool is that it was pretty cool it was pretty cool and since we mentioned legacy internet radio we have to shout out marcus johnson marcus j marcus johnson (laughs) that brother is doing some stuff y'all right here on south side right on south side and beautiful rva he is a, a tight a tough piece of leather tightly woven together yes he, is. yes he is a brilliant brother a brilliant mind and definitely somebody who is an advocate for our community and all things positive he is not um afraid to be a truth teller right. and if you check out his um show on monday nights you will find that to be true he is a walking wealth of knowledge and he is so open to sharing his platform with other positive energies that want to, you know, share an encouraging message, not just here in RVA, but around the world. They've got a nice following over there. And so we want our audience to check them out. Legacy Internet Radio. You can find um, them on Facebook. Marcus Johnson. Marcus J is on Facebook as well. Amanda does books before boys. Uh, we've known Amanda a long time, but uh, last year or year before we spoke at her event, books before boys. And so we've always kept in contact with her, always kept up with what she was doing in the community, always pushing her in prayer. She's just a powerful young woman and has an incredible testimony. And I hope that she gets to share that on this show. But her show is called Mommy and Lee. And um, this it's all about mother daughter empowerment and strengthening that relationship. And so we were just honored that she asked um, our girls, me and our girls to to come on their first episode. It was it was amazing. It and was. it was it was absolutely black girl magic all over the place. It, it was. was great. And you can check out the Mommy and Lee show on um in um Legacy Internet Radio at yeah. three thirty on Saturday. At three thirty on Saturdays. And if you want to go back and listen to the first episode, you can check them out on their Facebook page. You can check it out on Amanda's Facebook page, Amanda, Amanda Edie Oliver, and on the Legacy Internet Radio page. So shouts out to the family and um, all of those who are doing amazing things in the community. We are grateful for the invite, grateful for an opportunity for our girls because that was their first yeah. radio interview. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, they were a little nervous, but then they were like, hey, you know, we're got comfortable. It's <laughs> pretty cool. We were super proud of them. Super yeah. proud of them. So yeah. thank, thanks to Marcus J. Thanks to Amanda and the beautiful little lady Lee um, for having us come and hang out with them. So we have... Um Oh, we want to say thank you to everybody about... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, most definitely. The Love and Marriage, the communication mm-hmm. episode... And the episode five, how to have a quickie with your spouse. Absolutely yeah. overwhelming yeah. <laughs> response and, from those. And we know some of you were a little nervous when you saw the name of it. But once you heard it, I'm yes. sure you were encouraged. Yes, yes, yes. 
So we hear there's a lot of quickies going on. So. It's a whole lot of quickies going on <laughs> um, in RVA, especially since that episode. But outside you know, of RVA. outside of RVA, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's right. We got some feedback from other places. Um, yeah. And we, we want to make sure that we are keeping the conversation going. So one of the young ladies reached out on one of our Facebook pages and said, can y'all or can you all, I got to stop saying y'all, but I'm in the South, y'all. Um, and I just said it again. Can we create a Facebook page for Soulful Conversations? And so we're having, um, we're thinking about that because we have so many pages to manage right now, but we're thinking about it and we do want to provide a platform for you guys to continue the conversation. Really, you can continue the conversation on the Battle Station Facebook page because everything that we do is under the banner of the Battle Station Presents. Right, so right, even right. these podcasts are under the Battle Station Presents a Soulful Conversation with Frank and Sheila Battle. So when you see them posted on our Facebook pages or on Instagram or any other social media platform, you can feel free to start the conversation. We check those periodically throughout the day. Um, there shouldn't ever be a long length of time that goes by before you get a response from us. We're pretty good about responding quickly, but we did get some questions. We got questions from single people. Now that's what was funny. Yeah, We got questions and a lot of feedback from single people with um, just questions and, and positive responses about, you know, our take on a quickie and how that was the extension of building good communication in a relationship. So yeah. we're going to have to revisit that. Yeah. And now, and what I thought was interesting was we're having a lot of ladies that were sharing them with their, with their spouses. Significant others. Significant it wasn't, others. A, it wasn't just spouses. It and was they were actually others. listening. Yes. You know, that was yes. good. <laughs> so and wait a minute, I'm a shout, shout out, the brother. out to the brothers. But, I, but I'm a shout out the brothers who listened and asked their wives right. to listen to the broadcast because right. we had a couple of those too. Yeah, so that did. was pretty we cool. Did. We did. Um, we're just happy that the that the podcast is taking off and that people are showing an interest um, in these topics. These are topics that people are talking around, about sitting around their kitchen tables or during girls' night with their girlfriends or what was it, bourbon, bourbon and cigars with the with the bros. You know, everybody's having these conversations. But I think right. what we're hoping to do is just continue the conversation, not make it deep and spooky, but just put it out there in a way where people can really engage because that's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Please keep sharing, keep liking, keep subscribing, all that good stuff. We appreciate all of the feedback and we're going to start um putting some things out there in response to some of this feedback that we've gotten because we don't want people um to to not see the conversation flourish right we want we want the conversations to keep going so and we want you to know that we appreciate each and every one of you we so appreciate it yeah we don't take it like we don't take it like me um because it could just be me and you babe sitting here talking and nobody listening but people are listening so that's pretty cool right <laughs> pretty cool so this episode is pretty special because the our guest for um the evening is our sister who we are so incredibly proud of we love her so much and we were calling her dr lisa before she actually officially became dr lisa and i know that it was just a, ma a matter of respect and wanting to respect and honor people who had actually matriculated through the process that she did not like us calling her dr lisa before she was actually um com the degree was actually conferred on her but it is official Yes, it is official, ladies and gentlemen, as yes, of spring is. 2018, yes. she is now officially Dr. Lisa Johnson. And so I seen the pictures. The pictures is amazing. She is official. She is official. She done, <laughs> she done been draped and conferred. All of that. Yes, all of that. <laughs> and so we are so excited for all of the incredible things that God has in store for her. But before the blow up. Of, of her career, of her ministry, of her life, of her testimony, of her effectiveness um, goes global. We were, well, I was a student sitting at her feet trying to soak up everything that was falling from this woman's lips. Um, she was always so genuine, always so kind, always so willing to share from the most vulnerable um, and painful spaces in her life. And I believe that 
all of that and her willingness to do that is why God is blessing her and promoting her and, you know, taking her around the world. And so tonight we're going to talk about Healed Girls Rock, which is a ministry platform that she uses in both secular and sacred environments to share with women of all ages um, how they can do the work of inner healing. Yes. And Lisa, Dr. Lisa Johnson is one of the realest people. Absolutely. You can talk to. So as you listen to this, you know, fellas, give it a listen. Yeah. We don't want to leave the fellas out. Yeah, give it a listen. Yeah. We want to be real careful not to leave the fellas out. Yeah. Um, Lisa is one of the few females I know whose voice is so powerful that she she does men's conferences. Yeah. I mean, literally pastors um, and even secular organizations mm -hmm. call her in to executive CEO level types, um, men's conferences. She is a licensed and ordained minister. She is a graduate of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor uh, School of Theology uh, here in RVA. I mean, the woman has earned her chops and has earned the respect of um every demographic. I mean, there isn't, there isn't a demographic that I can think of that's here local that has not been blessed by her voice and by her experience and, and, and coupled with her training and all of that, but she just genuinely has a heart to want to see people flourish and thrive and to see them walk in their healing. And so I think you're going to get a snapshot of that tonight um, on this episode. And, and I'll just tell you, you won't hear me talking on this because this was some good stuff. <laughs> and I know when to shut up <laughs> and just let it be. So just let it flow. This is something I know each and every one of you will enjoy. So um, we are honored and just thankful that we had this opportunity to have a soulful conversation with Dr. Lisa Johnson. Stay tuned, family. It's going to be amazing. Here it is. Hi, family. It's your girl, Sheila, and I'm coming to you once again from the Battle Station. I am joined by our sister, our mentor, our favorite guest, Lisa Johnson. And as, as always, it's a pleasure to have her here. She's a very busy lady, and so anytime that um, she can come by the Battle Station and drop some knowledge on us, give us some things to think about. I know every time I have a conversation with her, I need a couple of days to recover from it. And so um, whenever she's here, we wanna make sure that we get some of those soulful conversations on tape so that we can share them with all of you. Tell the folks what's on your shirt. Oh, my shirt says Healed Girls Rock. Healed Girls Rock. And so that is one, one of the ministry assignments um, that has been uh, given, gifted, not just given, but yes, gifted yes. Uh, to Lisa Johnson in this journey called life. She is absolutely called to walk alongside those who are ready and intentional about doing inner healing work. There's been a, a little stir. You done had a little stir around. <laughs> Healed Girls Rock. She's, you know, people on Twitter are uh, following her, looking for her on Instagram and um, wanting to hear more about this concept, about this idea. Um, I sit here as a as a student of this work. But for those who are still curious, um, we don't want to put the perception out there that healed girls rock is for one demographic exactly so tell tell our audience how are you defining this big word in the middle girls who who are you talking about when i talk about girls sheila i'm talking about females from zero to 115 okay and i say from zero because research is being done about um the trauma that's being done to prenatal mm. um, yes. births and how those are affecting our lives even before we're called into the earth realm. So my, my conversation earlier with Sheila was that if we could get 
10 girls who are 10 to 21 to get on a healing journey that they would start to identify places in their lives where they're being traumatized or where they're being affected negatively. Mm -hmm. um, if we can get them to come alongside us as uh, the elder women yeah, yeah. Um, to start their healing journeys early, their lives can flourish at a greater level in their 30s, in their mm -hmm. 40s, in their 50s. I wasn't introduced to this work until I was mid 40. And I know what a transformation has that has taken place in my life as a result of the work. Ditto. So my, yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. Yeah. So I, my, my prayer is that we don't just um, reach out to a demographic of women who are 30 and over okay. or um, 40 and over, because if we can get our young sisters to start to recognize dysfunctional behaviors, mm -hmm. to start looking at things that we're listening to, mm -hmm. to start looking at what society says and who society says that they are, yeah. and know who the truth about who they are and who they have been created to be, right. they can live a much richer life right. um, because they won't buy into some of the lies that we bought into. Mm -hmm. They won't buy into the things that people say that they are. They won't allow dysfunctional people, not just men, but dysfunctional people, people. Good point. to Good be point. in their lives. They will recognize them when they show up because they will have been on a healing journey from a much younger age. And one of the things that is important to me is that um, I've had a couple people to say to me when I was selling T-shirts that they want T-shirts to say, Heal Women Rock. Well, if your little girl hasn't been healed, uh, your woman can't rock. All right. And you said that the demographic is greater than just healed girls. Healed people rock. Yes, absolutely. So I don't want to leave our brothers out. Right. Because one of the things that's important in that area is they want to be with a healthy woman. Absolutely. Who can make them rock. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Okay, so. As I said, I'm a student of this work. I am I am one who, without shame, will tell anybody that I have sat at the feet of this woman and absorbed. I, I drank it in. I ate it in. I, I slathered <laughs> it on me. Um, because at the end of the day, we know when something's not right. Right. We can we can bling out. We can dress it up. We can we, we can get its hair done every two weeks. We can we, we can get her nails done every two weeks. But if our insides are rotting and we are leaking that toxicity everywhere that we go in every relationship, we're doing it on our jobs. We're doing it with our children. We're doing it with those significant others. We're leaving the residue of all of that on all on all of these other people. Talk to us about what that brave first step was like for you. Because it really is about that first. It's not It's not that we don't know we need help. It's not that we don't know something's not quite right. But talk to this audience about where the little girl found you. And you knew, okay, it's not just that something is wrong, but I'm ready. Now, how, ready. how real do you want me to be? I want you to be as real as you are comfortable being. Okay. So Which I know is real. <laughs> I know how real that is. So the truth of the matter is I was in a marriage that I thought I was going to be in forever. We did too. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 We did too. Right. Um, yeah. I got divorced and I got you all. <laughs> she got us in the divorce. In the divorce. Yes. She, they were a part of the divorce decree. <laughs> no, seriously. I thought I, I was in a marriage that I thought I was going to be in forever. Yeah. And... I went to seek counsel, wise counsel, mm -hmm. um, upon my divorce, and it still wasn't getting to what I needed it to get mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. the, the counselor was a phenomenal counselor, is a phenomenal counsel, counselor, but he was teaching me to cope. Uh. And I know that I wasn't created to cope. Right. Yeah. So I stumbled into a class and found formational prayer 
which got to the root cause of why I was living the way mm. that I was living. And I was living beneath my privilege. Absolutely, goodness. I was wounded. <laughs> I was worn, mm. <laughs> but I was dressing it up. Yeah. I was macking it out. I mm. was shopping it out. I was eating it out. I was uh, performing all of these dysfunctional behaviors right. only to anesthetize the pain that I was actually living in. Right. I was smoking it out. If hey, I'm completely now. honest, I was smoking an, enough weed to create acres of marijuana. Preaching the gospel, singing in the choir, mm. living a complete lie mm. because I was trying to anesthetize the pain mm. from childhood. Wow. Not just from the marriage. No, from... no. I, marriage is what got me to the counselor. <sighs> okay. Or divorce is what got, got me you. to the counselor. Yeah. But God in his infinite wisdom mm. knew that me getting to the counselor and starting to feel better was going to make me hungry for more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I got formational prayer and I started to look at where I was wounded. Mm. And I was wounded because I had been molested mm. by a family member. But I was 26 year old, six years old when I told my parents. Mm that I've been molested. What now, makes us do that? Let's stop right there for a second. What makes us do that? Um, some of us are um, surrounded by people. And, and in that audience, um, there's usually, we hope, one person who can see, you know, um, who's not gonna just allow you to continue to act like everything's good and they're not going to pretend like they don't know something's not right. But what makes us, what makes us hold it after we're older and after, I mean, when we could really unload it. And I mean, I understand when you're, when you're a child and you don't know who to tell and you're scared and maybe you've been threatened not to tell, but does that really just bleed over into adulthood or why do we wait? Why do we wait? Why do we wait? Typically because we don't want to disrupt the family if it's been a family member. Okay. Or Absolutely. some people tell and parents don't believe it. Mm. It's a lot of that. Um, and if the statistics are true, and I believe they are, that one in four women. Mm. So when you think about a there. room. Put that out there. Wow. Of a hundred women, you know, you've got 25 who have been affected mm -hmm. by some level of sexual or domestic violence, mm. who are living a lie, covering mm. it up, telling people that they're fine. And one of the things I learned from that wise counselor was feelings in need of experience or um, being exposed uh, is what fine means. Mm. Those are feelings in need of exposure that you're living under, that you're telling everybody that you're living in a, a better place than you actually mm. are. So you say, I'm fine. I'm fine. So when I'm doing work with people, one-on-one -on -one especially, I use what's called a feeling wheel to make sure that I give them permission to feel whatever they're feeling. Because the only way for the little girl, Lisa, to live as the woman Lisa right. is for Lisa to take care of the little girl. Okay, so you just, you just said a lot. <laughs> I told y'all, this is what she do to me. But I want us to end in this segment with this. You said one of the, one of the words that connects us in this work, permission. Mm -hmm. To this audience of men, women, young, old, abused, neglected, happy, chilling, life is good. How would you extend to them the awareness that they have permission? They have permission and they don't have to wait for somebody else to come and sprinkle fairy dust on them. 
that it's a decision that they make. What would you say to that woman who's saying, I, I'm, I don't, I don't, de I don't deserve, I deserve this pain, or I deserve what happened to me, and you know, all of the 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 fruit of of my life as it stands right now is my fault. It's the it's the end result of my decisions. Well, let me backtrack. You asked me what was my first step. My first step was acknowledging that I had pain. Mm. The next step, and which is a courageous step, is knowing that I have to do something about the pain. Right. It's not easy. Right. It is a very, very, very difficult step to make. It's not so hard to know that you need to make it, but actually stepping, being honest with one other individual will free you mm. to make the step. Girl, this is what I'm going through. I have been living a lie. I have believed the lie. And I want to do something different. Yeah. Find that one person that you can be honest enough with to say, my life is a hot, stinking mess right <laughs> now. <laughs> and I want to do something different. Right. And I promise you, you will find a place that you can begin to do your work because you will then be free enough to search it out. Mm. I would love to say, reach out to me, healgirlsrock.com. And that's absolutely available, but I want you to make sure that you are willing and ready to do the work. Mm. Because one thing we happen, we, we typically, do once we start the work is once we start to feel better, we stop. Right. It's like an antibiotic when you had a flu. Uh -huh. <laughs> as soon as the antibiotic starts to work and you start to feel better, you don't think you need to finish the bottle. But, but to do your That's deep good. work, you have to stay on the journey and you have to stay in community because community is what's going to hold you accountable. It's going to hold your arms up when you get weak. Mm -hmm. It's going to push you. It's going to become the wind beneath your wings. I promise you. Because you say you're a student. But there have been moments when I've needed you mm. to hold my wing, my arms up yeah. so that I would stay on my journey. And I'm the one trained to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those are the things. It's important to give yourself permission yeah. to say, that hurt. Right. That hurt. Right. And I'm not going to lie and say right. that it didn't anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a big step. That's a huge step. That's a big step. Okay. May I say one more thing? Absolutely. I, I shared with Sheila that it was the summer of 2016, and I've been doing this work since 2008, mm -hmm. that I'd gotten up off of my sofa. I wasn't having a bad night or anything, um, but I was going up my stairs. And I heard little girl Lisa say, can you pick me up? Mm. And I sat on my stairs. This is a year ago. I sat on my stairs and rocked me. Mm. Because I had finally integrated the wounded Lisa who had, be who had begun her healing mm -hmm. journey with the grown up Lisa wow. who wanted to rock her and let her know. Welcome home. Yeah. There's an old African proverb that says, when you greet someone and they say, I, I, I see you, the response is, I'm here. I'm here. So, my dear friends, we see you. We see you. We, we see, see you. And you have permission to say, I, I am, am here. here. I am here. Well, Miss Lisa, goodness gracious, she did it again. <laughs> I promise y'all, I'm going to need a time out. Like, I'm going to have to go sit in a corner somewhere. Um, but if you want more information about this work, um, if you have a question, um, because we're going to start doing this regularly because there is far too much information um, compacted in this in this short woman um, <laughs> to keep it to herself. And I know that this is her season. This is the time for for her to be um, mobile and instrumental throughout not just the body of Christ but the community absolutely um, so that we can we can heal together we can heal together because every single one of you has someone in your circle that you can see and you know you're drowning you're drowning a little bit you're drowning a little bit but here's a life raft and here's an opportunity for you to get on the journey with some support 
that's willing and able and qualified um, to help you along the way, okay? If you need to get in touch, um, you can um, contact us through our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, The Battle Station, 15 Minutes of Grace, Healed Girls Rock, and Lisa's other social media handle is Woman With Worth. And so if you Google any of that, if you get on Facebook, you get on Instagram and you search on any of those handles, you can find us, okay? So until next time, be well from us here at The Battle Station. Thank you.